Today's show is sponsored by the MultiorgasmicMama.com. If lack of confidence, low libido, or guilt and shame around your sexuality are the cause of your bedroom woes, you know, the hot wild sex you never have anymore, or the transition into motherhood that sucked your libido dry, let me help you get your mojo and magnetic feminine spark back. Magic, miracles, total self-love, and multi-orgasmic bliss included. See you at the MultiorgasmicMama.com. What's up, hot mamas? Welcome back. It's Tilly here, and I am celebrating a beautiful beginning to my summer without kids. Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> a little break. I love my little dudes, but my goodness, two and a half months at home all day, every day. No help in town. Oh, my God. <sighs> Take a big, deep breath. And yes, um... If you have been struggling as well, maybe not with the kids so much, but maybe in your relationship because you have been at home with your partner for a long time and there's just not a lot of space for you to breathe. I totally feel you, sister. I really do. Uh, And, you know, there's like nothing to ruin the spark in a relationship like being up each other's butts every day, all day for months. And <laughs> like people need separation. Okay. It's okay for you to need to get out of the house and get away from your family. Like I totally understand that. Uh, which is why I wanted to talk to you today about how to get that spark back in your relationship because you know, you're probably not really feeling it right now, or maybe you are freaking awesome for you. If you found a way to like I don't know, maybe you're in a different situation where your partner is out of the house or at least one of you is out of the house. I don't know. But a lot of women in my realm right now are telling me otherwise that the spark is gone. Nothing is sexy about Corona. (laughs) Nothing is sexy about quarantines. So the first step that you want to take to get your spark back in the relationship is to commit to making a change. If you've lost the spark, then you have to quit doing what you have been doing in the past and you got to decide to do something different instead, because that's kind of the definition of stupid is that you keep doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. So commit to making a change can look like, you know, a lot of different things, actually. So one way that you could commit to change is that you just change things up, literally. Like you stop having sex the same time of the day that you always do, and you start having it a different time instead. You start uh, trying different ideas, trying, you know, different flavors of sexuality. I had a gal in one of my group programs um, from February, actually. She, <laughs> I was explaining to her about different flavors of sexuality and she thought that was so cool because she never heard about it before never heard anybody talk about flavors of sexuality so there are different types of ways to have sex and to express your sexuality you can have electric sex you can have um, enlightened sacred sex you can have kinky sex you can have energy sex Oh, I love energy sex. I absolutely adore energy sex. Um, You can have, you know, whatever different flavor of sex you want to have. There's so many different ways to have sex, but our definition of it is so small and confined. We think of it as just like penetration. And sometimes when I hear parents, you know, ask me about, how do I talk to my kids about sex? Like, do I tell them everything or just tell them about penetration? I'm like, no, you freaking tell them everything because otherwise they're going to get like this, this very fenced in view of what sex actually is penis and vagina, which is such bullshit. Like sex is so much more wide ranging than that. There's so many different ways to have sex. There's so many different flavors of sex. Like there's all sorts of different qualities and flavors that you can have. So if you've been having like just penis and vagina sex, if you're in a hetero relationship or vagina, vagina, whatever you are in, change it up. Like maybe explore different flavors of sexuality, like Tantra or kink or BDSM or whatever. Try something new. Uh, So commit to making a change. 
The second step that you can take to get your spurt back in the relationship is to stop being everything to everyone. There's nothing that's going to shut down female sexual desire as quickly as an obligation or an expectation. Oh my goodness. If you put an expectation on a female body, chances are it's going to shut down. (laughs) Female bodies, especially female sexuality, does not do well with obligation or expectation. That's because female or feminine yen energy is kind of all over the place. Like it is Shakti energy. It is free flowing. It is wild. It's up and down. It's all around. It's all over the place. And if you put an expectation or an obligation on feminine energy like that, it does not like it. (laughs) It does not like to be told what to do. It doesn't want to have a confinement. Like it just wants to flow freely. So you've got to stop putting pressure on your body. You've got to stop putting pressure on your orgasm. Stop pressuring yourself in goal-oriented sex. So can you drop the goal? Can you drop expectations? Can you drop obligations on yourself? And also stop expecting that you have to be everything to everyone else. You don't have to put that obligation on yourself. You don't have to, you don't have to feel bad about being, uh, about not constantly being like amused to your partner. You don't need to be everything to everyone. I promise your partner can handle themselves. There was a time that they lived without you before you. (laughs) They can handle themselves. So stop being everything to everyone. This includes your kids and your family and friends and everyone else too. When a woman thinks that she has to, you know, be a people pleaser to overgive all that stuff, it is so unsexy and it will drain your energy like nobody's business and it will make you not feel very sexual. It will make you not want to have sex or it'll make the sex that you're having really fucking dull and bland because it feels like another damn obligation. Okay, number three, establish some boundaries. Hello, boundaries. Most of us live with a half-ass yes or no when it comes to our sexuality. I've talked about this in the last episode, number 99. We don't really know what our full body yes or no is because we don't listen to our bodies. So we don't trust our bodies. We don't have a conversation or dialogue with our bodies. We're very conditioned to not do that. So we don't listen to our bodies, but more specifically, we don't listen to our pussies and we don't have a relationship with our pussies. So we do what we think we should do and we leave our bodies out of it. So boundaries with sexuality. Uh, and the, the, I'm talking about boundaries with sexuality, but also boundaries with the people in your lives. Um, a lot of us are just living from that super obligation, uh, contractual type relationships with our partners, with our friends and with our family. But if your boundaries suck, or if you don't really listen to your body or your intuition, even because I believe that intuition comes from the body personally. Uh, Maybe not everyone would agree with me there, but my experience of intuition is that gut feeling and that gut feeling, it's literally a sensation in your body. So how could you say that your intuition is not connected to your body? Well, we don't really listen to it. So establishing boundaries means that you are in touch with your body enough to hear what it is trying to convey to you, whether it's a yes or a no whether it's a do this or a don't do that. And that takes out the spark in your relationship because when you're constantly overriding your no with yes, you are creating layers of trauma over your body mind, in your body mind. And that will shut down your sexuality. And it will make you not want to have sex with your partner because you think it's your partner that's the problem, but it's not. It's you because you haven't listened to your body and you don't have a relationship with it. Okay, step number four to get your spark back is to, once you're finally listening to your body, then exercise your damn no. (laughs) 
and don't be scared of your no. A lot of women are scared of their no's. They're scared that if they say no when they've been constantly saying yes, but they didn't really mean to be yes to their partner, if they have been overriding their no for so long, what happens when they finally do, it means that they have to drop their identity. It means that they no longer get to identify with being that that woman that just gives and gives and gives to her partner or that, you know, just does things out of obligation. It means that you are literally dropping that identity and choosing another identity. And it can be scary because everything, every part of us is wrapped up in the identity that we believe ourselves to be. It can rock your world. Exercising your no when you've lived a lifetime of overriding it is is scary. So I really do understand. But when you have the courage, because that's really what it's about, is having the courage to step into a new identity. When you have that courage and you start to step into the no, what happens is that you finally start standing up for yourself and you know, really establishing hardcore boundaries and honoring your body. And that makes your yes that much more exciting and powerful. So when you are not exercising your no, you are taking the spark out of your relationship because you've never really established autonomy. You've never established sovereignty in that full body yes or no. And when you do, it makes things so much more exciting and joyful and ecstatic when you are finally a yes. It's hard to find your yes if you've never found your real fuck no. It just, that's just how it goes. And the way that you can do that is JDEG practices um, or just really, you know, creating a dynamic relationship with your body and your pussy. Okay. So the fifth way that you can get the spark back in your relationship is to be selfish in the bedroom, specifically in the bedroom. I I mean, I'm not telling you, you can't be selfish outside of the bedroom, but I mean, like you probably could stand to be a little more selfish than you are. Cause most of the women that are in my community, um, are over givers and people pleasers and they, could stand to be a little more selfish about what pleases them and what their desires are. There is a quote that I posted on Facebook and Instagram the other day. and It got a lot of attention because it's just fucking epic. But I said, uh, it's a, a quote by Esther Perel. She's a famous sexologist. Um, she has a podcast as well. That's freaking amazing. Anyway, the quote that it, I, I put on social media is called uh, female sexuality or no, The secret to female sexuality is how narcissistic it is. The secret to female sexuality is how narcissistic it is. (laughs) And what Esther said, and this comes from uh, an article she wrote for Goop. Goop is Gwyneth Paltrow's, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's making. If you've seen the documentary on Netflix, it's awesome. I love it, by the way. But, um, Yeah, so Esther Perel did this article for Goop, and she also wrote in it, and I love this quote. I'm just going to read it to you because it's just so fucking good, and it just puts the nail on the head with everything that I'm saying here. Female sexuality is the anecdote to a woman's social world, which is so much about tending to the needs of others. In order to actually be sexual which means to be inside her own mounting pleasures, sensations, excitement, and connection. She needs to be able to not think about others. To think about others will take her outside the woman role and into the caretaking and mother role. What Esther is saying here is that female sexuality does not do well when it is takes a caretaking role. If you are trying to caretake your partner or mother your partner or make sure that they're okay all the time or that they're experiencing pleasure all the time, oh my freaking goodness, this is a disaster for uh, female desire and like really tuning into your body and feeling authentic and like fully sexually expressed. Like, oh my goodness. 
if that is something that you have struggled with, it's probably because you are taking these caretaking roles into your sexual experiences. And this is just a disaster for relationships. Um, it will take the spark out of your relationship like nobody's biz. So the sixth step to get your spark back in a relationship, uh, other than, you know, being selfish in the bedroom is to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. I call it fun. Comfortable. Can you get fun? Comfortable. (laughs) So go fucking wild. Be crazy. Step out of your comfort zone. Do something you have never done before. Like, And, you know, for me, because I'm a Tantra teacher and I love Tantric sex, that's the flavor of sexuality I really enjoy, try eye gazing with your partner. Or you could try breath work with your partner. Or if you're not into, like, deep, connected breathing or your partner isn't, maybe uh, something a little more benign, like Wim Hof breathing or something, you could do that with your partner before you ever even get physical with them. So just try something different in the bedroom that you have not tried before and get fun, comfortable. (laughs) All right. So time to drop your overgiving people pleasing tendencies in the bedroom, my dear. Uh, that's what's killing the spark in your relationship. No, like that is, uh, that is so freaking terrible to bring those tendencies into your sexuality. Because like Esther says, uh, you know, the secret to female sexuality is that it's actually really narcissistic. Like your pleasure needs to be about you. You need to be finding the pleasure in your body. You need to be paying attention to the pleasure in your body because that turns your partner on. And when you are in touch with your pleasure and they are in touch with their pleasure, it lights a fire between you and it becomes magnetic. And it's like the fire builds with more fire and it becomes like a spark and it's amazing. So stop doing that shit. And if you have a problem with stopping to do that shit and you're over giving in your people pleasing in the bedroom all the time, that's why I created the essentially embodied woman group coaching program. It's my 10 week program to help you remove all your blocks to pleasure, turn on and feeling confident and sexy in your body and removing your blocks to intimacy as well. Cause the things that go pleasure are feeling that you have to tend to everyone else's needs over yours. So it's time to stop that shit, hot mama. Head to the multiorgasmicmama.com forward slash centrally dash embodied dash woman for all of the details for the August round of this program. This will be SEW3. I cannot believe we're on the third round of this program already. Uh, the last day to apply is July 22nd. 2020. All right, my dears, have fun getting the spark back in your relationship with these six steps. I'll review them real quick, just so you have a friendly reminder to leave off with. Number one, commit to making a change. Number two, stop being everything to everyone. Number three, establish and get to know your boundaries. Number four, exercise your no. Number five, be selfish in the bedroom. And number six, get uncomfortable get comfortable with the uncomfortable all right my loves have a great week and we'll be back next week bye